Welcome to Central United Methodist Church on this blessed Sunday morning. May God richly bless you. Working with our volunteers and faithful partners, we are now providing more meals each day and more days each week. Due to the current government restrictions, our meals are currently available on a takeout only basis and are provided without cost to anyone who comes to our door. If you would uh, like a hot, nutritious meal, Central United Methodist Church is serving Monday through Friday, plus the first two Saturdays of each month. Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday is a dinner meal from 4 to 5 p.m. Lunch on Tuesdays from 11.30 to 1, and the first two Saturdays of each month is a breakfast from 9 to 10.30. We thank all of our dedicated volunteers and partners for their tireless efforts and pray God's rich blessings on everyone coming to Central to receive a meal.
sharing of our joys and concerns. We continue to lift up all those in our community, our country, and the world who are being impacted by the coronavirus. We pray for God's support and protection of all the doctors, nurses, policemen, firemen, and other emergency workers who must work in the midst of this deadly virus. Join me in our opening prayer. Lord God, you who created us and redeemed us and sustained us, we rejoice that you have chosen us to be your own and that you visit us and dwell with us and open to, our, to us the ways to abundant life. We are full of awe and wonder at what you have done and what you continue to do. By your word, the heavens and the earth were made. By the bounty of your mercy in Jesus Christ, we have been born to new life. Your spirit fills the whole world with your loving kindness and gives us the power we need to be your witness and to lift up your holy name. Blessed are you, O God, and blessed are all who live in you. Help us today to joyfully proclaim our faith and to worship you as you desire. Bring us closer to you and to one another and in our prayers and our thanksgiving, our hearing and our speaking and our giving and receiving. Make us more completely thine. We ask it in the name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. Join with me in our prayer of invocation. Gracious Lord, this morning we come to you with so many things on our hearts. Keep our hearts and our minds open to your words of healing and of hope. Give us spirits of courage for all the times ahead. We ask your blessing on all those this day who are afflicted with illness and debilitating disease. For those who mourn, for those who feel lost and alienated from family and from friends, be with these dear people. Help them to feel your comforting and restoring presence. Give to us also, the Lord, a spirit of peace and joy that we might live our lives through our attitudes and actions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May we see it. Our scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 44 through 53. Hear the word of the Lord. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead, on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is, be, is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witness of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then they led them out as far as Bethany and lifted up his hands and he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And there was, they were continually in the temple blessing God. The reading of God's word for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Bow with me. Gracious God, you have a purpose and you have a reason for us. We know, Lord, that you want us to say yes and 
and not gas butts. We know, Lord, that you want us to learn today what you have in store for us. And we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Before television, there was vaudeville. Vaudeville was where many of our best old-time comics learned their trade. Entertainers in, broad, in vaudeville had to face some pretty tough audiences. So many of them ended their acts with show-stopping moves to ensure applause at the end. One performer named Eddie Leonard announced in every performance that this was his very last show. He guessed, probably correctly, that very few people would be heartless enough to boo a man who was performing his very last show. So for 20 years, the announcement that this was his last show ensured Leonard a big ovation at the close of his act. Our Bible reading for today is about Jesus' final curtain, but he didn't need any gimmicks to keep his audience's attention. The disciples were hanging on every word. This was the last time he would ever speak to them in the flesh, and they didn't want to miss a word of it. In chapter 24, Luke tells us, then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Christ will suffer and raise from the dead on the third day in repentance and forgiveness of sin will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. He was witness of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been closed with power from on high. When he led them out of the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stay continually at the temple, praising God. What a startling spectacle that must have been. While he was blessing them, he left and was taken into heaven. How did the disciples feel at that very moment? Was their sense of loss balanced by a sense of awe? What did it mean when they were told to wait for power from on high? Newspaper columnist and author Ellen Goodman once wrote something about making an exit. She wrote, there's a trick to the graceful exit. It begins with a vision to recognize when a job, a life stage, or a relationship is over and let go. It means leaving what, what's over without denying its validity or its past importance in our lives. It involves a sense of future, a belief that every exit line is an entry, that we are moving on rather than out. Ms. Goodman's words are awesome when applied to ascension. Jesus' departure wasn't the end of the story. In fact, his ascension into heaven opened the way for the disciples to begin a dramatic, spirit-empowered ministry that spread the good news of salvation all over the world. The end result was the establishment of Christian churches, hospitals, orphanages, universities, and missions. It's like something the poet Tennyson once wrote. He was describing the code of ethics by which ancient knights lived. He said the code had four components. Live pure, speak true, right wrong, follow the king. 
at its most basic level, this was also the charge given to the disciples. Following Jesus' example, they would live holy lives, speak the truth of God's word, right the wrongs of an unjust society, and do all the things their king had done when he walked among them. They were chosen to carry Jesus' work to the whole world, and he had promised them that his spirit enabled them that they would do even greater things than he had done. So now it was a time for a decision. The disciples didn't know the form of power the Holy Spirit would bestow on them, and they didn't know what sort of risks they were about to face. These were 12 men who most likely never traveled far from their home. So how could they preach repentance and forgiveness to all nations on earth? After the roller coaster ride of experiences the disciples had just been on, were they ready for this new challenge? And I have to ask you, are you ready for this challenge as Christ followers today? Psychologist Martha Beck reported that many of her clients missed great opportunities for happiness because they were afraid of challenge or failure or change. They often concocted lame excuses to explain their lack of, of initiative. In an article in O Magazine, she recounts snippets of actual conversations that she, that she had with unfulfilled clients. I thought that you would enjoy hearing some of these. You might even relate to some of them. Beck said, you've been invited to raft the Grand Canyon this summer. That's great. It's exactly what you've always wanted to do. And the client responded, yeah, but I can't go. I gotta get my teeth cleaned that week. <laughs> Here's another Beck. If you really love this man, marry him. And the client responded, yeah, but what happens if he dies before I do? Beck said, you, sh you say that you do anything to work in the automotive industry, and you have all the credentials. You could start applying for jobs right now. And the client responded, yeah, but I'm too tall. Do you hear a continuing theme? Yeah, but. Contrast the yeah, but attitude of Martha Beck's clients with the attitude of comedian Tina Fey, a cast member on Saturday Night Live. She credits her current success to the role she learned in an improvisational acting class. Are you familiar with improv? You are if you ever watched the TV show, whose line is it anyway? Performers make up scene sketches and songs on the spot. Improv is a risky, exciting art form and requires a lot of courage to do it right. Faye's teacher, Martha DeMatt, gave the class a list of rules about taking risks. Among the rules were statements like this. Greet everyone with yes and. Notice that, not yeah, but, but yes, and. Here's another rule. Say yes, and you'll find, and you'll figure it out afterwards. And the fun is always on the other side of yes. Tina Fey memorized every one of these rules. They came, came in handy when she was faced with new opportunities and new challenges. Rather than giving in to fear or self-doubt, she would automatically focus on these rules because she used the yes rules as a guideline. She took on new challenges and found success far beyond her wildest expectations. What is your response to God's calling on your life? Yeah, but, or yes, and. 
What if you automatically follow the yes rules in your relationship with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? How would it change your life? Do you trust God with your life without <clears throat> reservations? According to Pastor Randy Frizzese, leaders can attract either fans or followers. Fans like the leader. They are attracted by the leader's personality or charisma. Followers, on the other, other hand, are attracted by the leader's vision. Followers want to be challenged by great goals. They want to commit to something larger than themselves. Among the crowds who come to see Jesus preach and teach, many were fans, but only a few were followers. The disciples were not just fans, they were true followers. They were yes and men. They waited for the power from on high, and when they received it, they went out and preached and taught and healed and performed miracles far beyond their own abilities. And today, Jesus' message is still proclaimed. His name is still worshipped. His power is still available to people of every nation on earth. You and I have salvation and new life because one day, 2,000 years ago, a small band of men and women said yes and to Jesus calling. But their work isn't finished. Christ is still looking for men and women who will say yes and. There is a well-known story about William Wilmoth, dean of the chapel of Duke University. Wilmoth once received a phone call from an irate father. The call told, the caller told woman furiously, I hold you personally responsible for this. He was angry because his graduate school bound daughter had decided to, in his words, throw it all away and go do mission work in Haiti with the Presbyterian Church. The father screamed, isn't that absurd? She has a BS degree from Duke and she is going off to dig ditches in, high, in Haiti and I hold you responsible for this. Woman said, why me? The father said, you integrated yourself and filled her mind with all this religious stuff. Wilmoth was not easily intimidated. He asked the father, Sir, weren't you the one who had her baptized? Well, yes, said the irate father. And didn't you take her to Sunday school when she was a little girl, asked Wilmoth? Well, well, yeah, replied the father. And didn't you allow your daughter to go on those youth trips, ski trips to Colorado? Where she, when she was in high school, yeah, but what does that have to do with anything? Sir, said Wilman, you're the reason she threw it all away. You introduced her to Jesus, not me. But, said the father, all we wanted was her to be a Presbyterian. <laughs> no one replied, well, sorry, sir, but you messed up. You've gone and made a disciple. The father was a yeah, but follower and didn't know quite what to do with his daughter. Said yes and, I have to ask you, how about you? What is your response to God today? I pray that like those early disciples, you were, your response is yes and. Praise be to God. Now is the time where we will receive our tithes and offerings of love. Reminder that church expenses like utilities and salaries continue each week, even when we can't meet together for worship. There are three ways to give. You can mail your checks with your offering envelope. You can drop your offering envelope through the mail slot in the 13th Street ramp door, or you can contribute by clicking on the donate button 
on our website, www.centralunitedmethodistchurch.org. In the power of the Holy Spirit, we now go forth into the world to fulfill our calling as the people of God, the body of Christ. Prepare with me for the benediction. May God's created spirit be with us in our hearts and minds as we leave this place. May God's creative spirit help us to see with new wonder the splendor of your creation all around us and inspire us to preserve and protect it. Go now in peace, love, and care for one another in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.